Out of all the studied insects, locusts have the most complicated smell centers yet found in their brains. But why do these insects invest so much in the sense of smell when vision is so much more useful? Actually, for bugs, smell is the way to go. Bug eyes will always have horrible resolution because of the physics of sight. You need to take in lots and lots of light to form a clear image of the world, and so we as humans have these big eyeballs with a three to four centimeter wide retina at the back. And that's bigger than the entire body of lots of bugs. Bug eyes are comparatively tiny and take in way less light, meaning much less detail. They mostly use their eyes to detect motion or see basic shapes and colors. Instead, insects rely really heavily on their chemical senses, especially smell. By sampling the scents of different chemicals in the air, you can learn a lot about what's in the environment. So insects use their antennae to evade the odors of predators or toxins and to find their way towards food sources or a mate. The word smell first appears in Middle English and is thought to come from Old English, but no one can find any earlier evidence for it. The word scent, on the other hand, comes from the 14th century hunting word senten, meaning to perceive by smell. And that word came to English from Old French sentir and Latin sentire, which referred to feeling or sensing more generally. And no one is quite sure why English scribes added the letter C into the word scent. So let's get back to locusts, recalling that they're the destructive swarming form of some types of grasshoppers. To better understand locust behavior, scientists have studied their smell processing centers in the brain. The brain air is responsible for the sense of olfaction. And this led to an amazing discovery. Out of all the insects ever studied, the most anatomically complex olfactory centers are found in the locust brain. So while the English word scent derives from a pretty general word relating to the senses, Latin speakers actually use the word olfactus to refer to the sense of smell. And this is the source of the English word olfaction. Olfactus comes from another word olfacere, meaning to produce a smell, from the word olere, meaning to emit a smell, plus facere, meaning to produce. Olere shares its root with the Latin noun for smell, which is odor, and that word also found its way into English, keeping its meaning. In both insects and mammals, the smell processing brain centers are made up of assemblages of many small ball-shaped structures called glomeruli that respond to different odors, and these glomeruli are composed of synapses between different types of neurons. When an animal experiences a particular smell, a particular combination of glomeruli activates, and different odors typically activate their own unique set of glomeruli. In theory, the more olfactory glomeruli you have in your brain, the more different chemicals your brain can discern, and the easier it is for you to tell the difference between them. This is particularly important when trying to figure out what are the components of a mixture of smells, or what are the relative ratios of smells in that mixture. Odors come from chemicals in the air, and the word chemical interestingly comes from the word alchemy. Alchemy used to refer to a mix of practices ranging from pharmaceuticals to the scientific study of substances, as well as the futile obsession with converting lead into gold. The word alchemy derives from Arabic alchemia, with al just meaning the, and this word is thought to come from the Greek kamaya, a word referring to alchemical practices of the Greek colonists in Alexandria in Egypt. Vertebrates like mice and humans typically have a few thousand olfactory glomeruli in their brain, but most insects, since they're so much smaller, have fewer than 100 olfactory glomeruli. The migratory locust brain, however, contains almost 3,000 of these glomeruli, putting it firmly on par with mammals. That's five times more than the next insect that's not a locust, which happens to be an ant with about 500 glomeruli. So far, scientists don't know why the locust brain has so many glomeruli, since they possess only about an average number of odor receptor genes in their genomes. And these are the genes that produce the proteins, odor receptors, that are actually responsible for binding to odor molecules. But the sheer anatomical complexity of the locust olfactory brain centers suggests that locusts have some really incredible and also very weird capabilities for smelling things. So next time, we'll get into some experiments that measured neural activity in the locust brain.